Hello, and welcome to another message from God's Way Through Christ Ministry, where we aspire to live life on purpose through the sharing of God's Word. Here is Pastor Nate with today's message. Hello, and welcome to another message from God's Way Through Christ Ministry. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday service. This is where we study, learn, and abide along our daily walks and our daily journeys as we walk with Christ. If there is one thing that I know for certain, that is, there is our way and there is God's way. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to once again come together, join together and with one mind and one purpose, and that is to feast on your word and your wisdom, on the discernment, on the learnings everything that we can glean and gain from it to help us to live a life that is pleasing in your sight, to help guide us and and lead us in the ways that we should go, to help us to be delivered from the evils and foils of this world. God, I pray that you use your Aaron boy, your messenger, to deliver this message, your word, to your people, that it may enter their minds and their hearts to help encourage inspire, uplift, and strengthen them to walk in the way that you would have and want them to walk. All of this we ask and pray in your Son, Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today I want to talk about inheritance. Um, In this world, the uh, norm is usually we want to try to improve generation over generation. In fact, families pride themselves on how much they can accumulate uh, to pass on to those that follow after them. Some even devote their lives to such a purpose. Today's message is addressed to to address this very issue, not just in in the traditional sense that you you may be thinking. Um, In Proverbs, just one verse. Proverbs 13, 22, taken from the NIV. Proverbs 13 and 22, taking from the NIV. Verse 22, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Hmm. Makes you think about that for a minute. And what it hopefully will cause you to think about is, What is the legacy you are leaving? What legacy are you leaving? That's the topic for today's message. It it is all but a foregone conclusion that unless Christ returns, our lives as we know them will one day come to an end. Um, While giving top priority to where we will spend eternity, we should secondarily give thought and act on leaving this earth better than how we arrived in it. This focus is especially true if we have children or family uh, or close loved ones that survive us, that live on after we're gone. So in, in other words, asking what good came from our lives. So first, what is good? Or what is a good person? Uh, Yes, we should all know and believe that God is good in him being morally perfect and glorious and and generous. But how does this apply to, to man, to you personally, you might be asking? The translation from this word, from its Greek and Hebrew origins, is defined as pleasant, uh, joyful, agreeable, kindness, noble, honorable, worthy, useful, high quality, productive. Those are just some of the words. We should view these, however, through the lens of being related to, for, or about the kingdom of God as a member of the body of Christ. It's been stated that um, common in in nearly every language, good is sanctioned as inherent value, uh, beneficent effect, or both. 
These signify primarily what a person finds gratifying to their senses, in line and in agreement with their moral position. Notice these are not exclusively confined to acts, but more about a person's character, what's in their heart. Who a person is on the inside will eventually surface. Our actions and behaviors are guided by our thoughts, beliefs, and values. Again, our, our heart's content. So in other words, what drives a person to do what they do and desire, sadly, some wake each day, looking forward to antagonizing, belittling, and mistreating others, stirring up drama and controversy pushing other people's buttons to cause them to respond emotionally, uh, the selfish thrill they gain from their apparent power or influence they mistakenly believe they wield over others, with the intended outcome being negative. That would not be considered good for all intents and purposes. In, in no way is good intended to mean false actions, pretending a high position or pedestal one puts themselves on, and certainly good is not intended to mean perfect as it relates to man. God is and is not. Neither is good about looks or external, external aesthetics. Um, as, as that is devaluing the intended meaning. If we, if we look at uh, the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 19, I'm going to read from the Amplified. Luke 18, 19, verse 19 in the Amplified, 19. Jesus said to him, Why do you call me essentially and perfectly morally good? No one is essentially and perfectly morally good, except God only. And this is Jesus talking, saying that no one but God. Here's where you go, um, Pastor, th this verse contradicts almost everything you just said. I beg to differ. It's intended to point out the simple fact that we alone, on our own accord, without God, are not and cannot be good. It is the God in us, his spirit dwelling inside of us, that stirs our hearts and minds, which fuels our behaviors. That, in turn, can be called good. No one understands the difference. So, what next? What is wealth? Sure, wealth in this world is understood to be money or uh, material goods and possessions that have value, being synonymous with riches. Um, please understand that our lives do not consist entirely or uh, relate to our abundance of material possessions or stuff. As God is the creator of all. Anything we possess in the first place is his and is just on loan to us for a brief period, however long we exist here. Don't get to take it with us. Didn't come with anything. We'll leave the same way. So then what other types of wealth could there be? Well, have you ever heard of a wealth of knowledge? term, a phrase that's used, armed with these, one can amass as much material wealth as they desire. Wealth in and of itself does not make a person better or worse than anyone else. There are both wealthy and impoverished people with strong moral character. There's also wealthy and poor people who misbehave by being stingy, rude, mean, uh, difficult, and wicked. 
In Proverbs verse 13, chapter 13, verse 14, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 14, the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. So imagine then, if you will, that in becoming wise, though, for example, the, the, through, for example, the studying of God's word, you gain access to a fountain of life, a endless spring of nourishment that's toxic free. No uh, bacteria, no um, man-made chemicals added to it that is pure in form, endless running spring. Wouldn't that be considered a form of wealth as the bodies are largely comprised of water i would i would have to say so if something you possess that maybe others didn't um, that would be considered wealth so having the the resources in abundance enabling you to avoid being tripped up or entangled meeting an untimely death would would that be considered wealth i for one would not disrespect that by calling it luck some may well you're just lucky i don't believe in luck fate purpose i don't even believe in coincidence predestined we would be prudent in shifting our mindsets away from thinking of and seeing wealth in strictly material possession terms there is so much more that can be included in and under the umbrella definition of wealth especially true when we speak of passing it on as an inheritance so what is an inheritance when you hear the word inheritance what usually comes to mind for you if you're like many you're thinking about money property jewelry businesses vehicles basically all things material that have a stated value something given to you not necessarily earned by the estate owner is usually found in a, in a will after they've passed but what other definitions can be applied to to that word we need only look at the first six verses in the same chapter for clear examples proverbs chapter 13 verses 1 through 6 from the niv a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things, but the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips persevere, preserve I'm sorry, their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Verse 5, the righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. And then verse 6, righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. So these verses point out that there is value to the son in receiving wise instruction from the father the godly people choosing to be fruitful in what they speak which leads to good things that there is value in watching what leaves your lips as it can elongate your life in the temporal while ensuring a pleasant eternal life that there is value in working as one can find satisfaction and fulfillment something not found in being lazy shiftless and finally as a righteous individual hating what is fake false useless while guarding your integrity is just what you do so now let's re-examine the key verse from this message this time it's taken from the Amplified Bible. Proverbs, Proverbs 13 and 22 from the Amplified. A good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children 
and the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. So here do you see where the inheritance of wealth can be far, far more than just material possessions. Along these lines, a wise parent passing down wise counsel and instruction can be of great benefit, far more critical than leaving them stuff is teaching your children the value of integrity and reputation can be priceless. These all point to something far more essential and valuable than stuff or things to pass down to future generations, which calls into focus uh, the importance and albeit crucial value of your legacy. What will you be remembered by? your loved ones after the money runs out or the possessions are gone. Truth be told, in failing to provide proper wisdom and knowledge, those possessions, money and property, the stuff, well, that can quickly find its way into the hands of others. Biblically here it says into the hands of the righteous, which is a good thing. It can also be stolen by the wicked. The noblest act a parent can leave their children as an inheritance, a legacy, is strength and character. Possessions, money, things, and stuff without nobility in character is just setting them up for failure. How will they know to properly utilize and leverage purposely purposefully, intentionally, what you have left them if you haven't given them instruction. As they say on airplanes, secure your own oxygen mask first. In living out your life, first ensure where your soul will spend eternity. Then keep in sharp focus the legacy you will leave behind when you leave this earth, asking yourself in every act, action, thought, spoken word, and behavior. Will my legacy be one that will help lift up and support and sustain others, something to be proud of, or will it be a red wine stain on the white rug? The outcome is entirely up to you. Choose wisely. Father, we thank you for this, this time of coming together. We thank you for your word, the learnings, the teachings, the knowledge, the wisdom. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy that sustains us throughout any circumstance or adversity. Father, I, I pray that this word enter the hearts and minds of your creations, your humans, whether they know you or not, that will help them to guide them, to lead them, and to fully understand and appreciate their impact on other individuals. People are watching. It's not as much what we say. It is more often what we do. Let this word be an encouragement to those to help them when it appears that the way of the world is the polar opposite of the way that you would have us to live our lives. Let this word encourage and inspire to shore up and strengthen those to continue to walk in faith, by faith, with faith, knowing that you are the God of all, the creator of all. And, and God, for those of you who look, choose, desire, want to have a closer relationship with you, I pray that they pray this prayer with me as a first step as an introduction, as a hello, as a beginning of the relationship. And that prayer goes like this. God, I know I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that your son Jesus gave up his life for me by dying on the cross in my place, paying the price for my sin and rose again so that I may be saved. I ask that you come into my heart and I accept your precious gift of salvation, victory over sin, 
and eternal life with you. This we ask and pray in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you have accepted Christ into your life. You have accepted the invitation to begin the relationship that can and will, if you do your part, lead to eternal life. Your part is to study, immerse yourself in the Word, immerse yourself in the Word of God, learn it, abide, be guided on what is necessary. It's not a ritual of steps to walk through. In a relationship, there are two parties that commit, that are fully present, that are supportive of each other. In, in functional relationships, it's two parties coming together and intertwining in the strength that is built from that. That's what this is. Continue to build and develop upon, upon this. And you will experience when adversity gets not if that peace that surpasses understanding, that knowledge of what the answer should be on how I should proceed in this life. Do that for you. I have one ask that I would ask you to do for me and this church. And, and that is, will you please share this message with three people of your choosing? That's all I ask. Trying to get the word out to people, hurting people who are in need of encouragement. Please share this message with three people of your choosing. Thank you in advance. We appreciate your love and support. So glad you could join us. Hope you can again next Sunday. Until then. Go and live your blessed life on purpose. Thank you for joining and worshiping with us today. I hope your soul was fed and thoughts stirred in the sharing of God's word and that today's message will inspire you to live a godly life. Whether viewing on our website or one of the social media platforms, we ask that you consider supporting our ministry with a donation of any size. To do so, please visit our website at www.gwtcm.org. That's www.gwtcm.org. We appreciate you and your support. We look forward to sharing God's message with you again. Until then, be well, blessed, and live a life on purpose.